joining us today. I'm not sure, haven't received confirmation. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, We're live. All right. Um, Chair Massey, it is 1.59. Um, I have not heard anything from Trustee Kent, but you do have quorum um, if you'd like to get started on time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I put my agenda up here. Okay. So good afternoon. The February 4th, 2021 regular board meeting of the City Colleges of Chicago <clears throat> is now called to order. For the record, the state of Illinois continues to operate on a statewide disaster proclamation first issued by Governor Pritzker on March 9th, 2020 and reaffirmed on January 8th. I would like to also note that we continue to be subject to restrictions in the size and types of gatherings that are permissible under both the current phase of the state of Illinois is restored Illinois programs, as well as under public order, health order, number 2020-9, six amended and reissued by the commissioner of the Commission of Health of the city of Chicago. Today, we meet virtually to undertake certain actions necessary for the continued efficient operation of the district. Will the assistant secretary please call the roll? Mr. Swanson. Here, sorry, slow in the mute. <laughs> Secretary Davis? Here. Uh, Trustee Lopez? Here. Uh, Trustee Williams? Here. Uh, student Trustee Thomas? Here. Trustee Kent? Here. And uh, Chair Massey? Here. So let the record show that in accordance with the Illinois Public Community College Act and the Illinois Open Meetings Act, we have a quorum. So good afternoon again and happy new year to those viewing this meeting on YouTube and via Zoom. This is our first regular board meeting of 2021. Uh, and I know we all look forward to seeing what is ahead in this new year. As Harriet Tubman once said, every great dream begins with a dreamer Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach the stars to change the world, end of a quote. This year, we can mark Black History Month with the historic inauguration of the first African-American, Asian-American female vice president of the United States. Quite an achievement. We're also returning to holding committee meetings prior to the board meeting. If you are interested in viewing the proceedings, the schedule is on the board web page on the City College's website at www.ccc.edu. We will be hearing later from Vice Chair Swanson about the Committee on Academic Affairs and Student Services, which held its first meeting of 2021 earlier today. At the beginning of January, the board held this annual retreat for purposes of training and self-evaluation. It was a very productive session. We do this annually. And it was a reminder of the responsibility and great privilege it is to serve on this board. And I want to thank my colleagues on the board, Chancellor Salgado and his team who joined us at that retreat. I'm sure that Chancellor Sagato will speak more to this in his remarks, but I want to recognize and thank former Mayor Rahm Emanuel for his generous, he and his wife, Amy, for their generous donation to City College's STAR scholarship program, which of course he was uh, helped to get started. And we are grateful for his continued support on behalf of our students. 
I would also like to acknowledge the first cohort of CCC students who are beginning the introduction to molecular engineering courses at the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering at the University of Chicago. I was on the board of trustees at the university and chaired the strategic planning committee that led to the uh, development of the Pritzker School. So I'm very proud of this. The school is open to pathways for more CC students to transfer into four-year STEM degree programs and has been part of the Pritzker School's mission since the school's launch. This is an excellent program which will broaden the pipeline of under the underrepresented Chicago students into STEM majors that are really at the cutting edge of science. And I'm thrilled that city colleges will be partnering with the Pritzker School in this endeavor. So I think we're gonna hear some more about that. I think uh, this concludes my remarks for today, but I will close by wishing all of our faculty, staff and students a strong start for a new term. We will now move on to uh, no, student trustee. Thomas, would you please proceed with your report? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair Madison. Good afternoon, everybody. Members of the board, college presidents, everyone watching and participating. Black History Month must be more than a month of remembrance. It should be a tribute to our history and reminder of the work that lies in the month, that lies ahead in the months we have here. I would like to start off by saying, I hope everybody's staying warm and safe. And also follow up, thank you, CFO Rodriguez for taking the time out of your schedule to help resolve some of the issues that were brought up in the previous board meeting. I look forward to future communication with you. The students have already been hard at work during the month of February with a series of Black History events. Kendra King, they've been highlighting every, every Friday night, they've been having a Black, his, a black movie night for the month. Uh, February 9th, that we have a poetry slam. It's open to everybody to be spoken word. And on the 25th of February, they'll be having another heritage event. At Wilbur Wright, they have a Black History Month Kahoot, which was two days ago. And for the whole, the entire month of February, they'll be having a Wright's Cutest Pet Competition. It'll be first, second, third place prizes. First place, I believe, is iPad. The second place, I believe, is um, Beats Headphones. And third place, I believe, is a gift card. Um, they'll also be having a Right Got Talent, and that'll be held at the end of the month. On February 11th, they'll be having a Valentine's Day painting party. And shortly after that, they'll be having a Make a Friend Week, which will, which will follow up on the, the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th. On the 16th, they'll be having a Friends Trivia, knowledge about the sitcom Friends. On the 17th, there'll be a Speed Friending event. And the 18th, they'll be making friendship bracelets. And here in Washington, they've been doing something similar with, with, um, with Kennedy King with the whole movie. They have a Black Cinema event. One almost two days ago, the movie called Boss a black experience in, in business. And on the 17th, they'll be having a movie called One Night in Miami. On the 9th, they'll be having Black History Month Trivia Night. And on the 10th, SGA will be collaborating with Black Student Union and the Wellness Center. And they'll be holding an event called Cater to You. And they'll be having a discussion on the importance of mental health in the black background. On the 19th, they'll be having a Black Cultural Renaissance is basically a, a creative showcase to, to depict the Black history and pride throughout art, music, and poetry. And they'll be having the Civil Rights Movement, Past, Present, and Future with three panelists. The first panelist will be Michelle Duster. She recently wrote a book and she's a tutor at, at Wilbur Wright. Maceo Thomas. He's an admin, I believe, at Henry Washington. Asif Wilson, the Associate Dean of Affairs of, of Academic Affairs, and Larnie O'Donnell, which is an English professor. The panelists will examine the racist practice, discrimination, prejudice, and inequalities against African American and Pan African American people throughout the history of pre past, present, and future. And Olive Harvey, they had a, a panel a panel discussion two days ago as well, called Black Representation in the Arts. The panelists discussed difficulties in being black in the, in the arts. 
The panelists were Kamisha Khan, a Chicago State University theater teacher, Troy Tyler, the owner of personality, Renuko Jai, award-winning writer and director, Rashada Dewan, another award-winning writer, director, and actress, Derek Dow, a filmmaker, Mount Khan, an award-winning musician. following day, they had a self-determination for Afro decision. Cecile Johnson discussed the, the restoration of Black family, identity, and reparation. On the 17th of February, they'll be having an HBCU experience where different faculty and members around the community will be discussing how, they, how their experience was uh, going to HBCU school. And on the 22nd of, of February, SGA, they'll be having a, a check-in called Liberty. So SGA, they've been doing like bi-weekly check-ins to help combat with the difficulties that they've been having to endure for, um, with, with the pandemic and online learning. And they'll be having a closing ceremony gospel showcase, which is on the 26th. And they'll have a DuSable Museum virtual tour. It's open to all the students for the entire month of February. Olive Harvey, they've been doing a great job with creating and implementing comprehensive initiatives that help move the needle and student support for online learning. They've been doing this by SGA, they, they, S, sorry, student government, they've partnered with enrollment management and have launched a peer mentor program that allows students to receive assistance from, from student services after, after normal business hours. There will be three peer mentors, two of which are student leaders, trying to answer questions and connect students to the support their need. They'll also be having a, a Milton Mentor, which is an initiative that provides outreach and resource support from several departments to continuing students that have high risk for non-retention. One of the hardest things in life is having the words in your heart that you cannot utter. Injustice, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The scholars of City College have voiced another concern that should be addressed immediately regarding the update of the website and application process. There are quite a few scholars who will be interested in helping accelerate the process. It will also benefit their academic resume moving forward. With the updated website, the scholars have also voiced the lack of inclusiveness of gender identity. Scholars have suggested that for the use of pronoun options throughout the application. The scholars believe this is a disservice that it is not prioritized. Ashe in the report. Thank you very much, student trustee Thomas. Chancellor Sagada, your report, please. Yes, um, thank you, Chair Massey. Thank you to all of uh, uh, everyone joining us today. Uh, thank you, student trustee Thomas, for a very thorough report and for really sharing the, the incredible life that uh, our campuses have right now uh, and the, the life that our students are bringing to our campuses right now. Uh, despite the circumstances, our students have been pushing through, uh, not just with their academics, but with creating that uh, cohesive, caring community. Um, I want you to know, student trustee uh, Thomas, that I have had some conversations about some of the matters that you've discussed uh, 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 with regards to the website, and 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 I'm uh, have already instructed Provost Potter to work with a group of students to begin to identify improvements that we need to make um, in order to be a very inclusive institution. Um, and so we will. Um, uh, we will make sure that you're informed about the progress of that work. But we've got that started already. Um, and we'll have something to re report uh, back to you and other students. Uh, and, and by the way, that was a result of these check-ins with the chancellor that I've been having with students. So I want to encourage uh, students to continue to have check-ins with the chancellor. It's an opportunity for me to hear these kinds of things directly uh, that we can uh, get to improving um, as an institution. But, uh, you know, I, I, I was reflecting that in, in the intervening weeks since our last board meeting, um, we started a new semester and as student trustee Thomas has shared, you know, uh, you know we started with a bang. 
Uh, we've welcomed the new administration to Washington, one of the most diverse in history, including the first black and Asian American vice president, as Chair Massey mentioned, and Kamala Harris, and a first lady in Dr. Jill Biden, who is a working community college professor, uh, knows our students and the important role that community colleges you know, play in our country. Uh, through our work at City Colleges day in and day out, we also continue to advance the City Colleges mission, delivering education that forms the underpinning of a strong democracy, one that's guided by fact, reason, and justice. Um, and we can't stress enough the importance of the work we do to foster a stronger democracy at this moment in time. Um, as has been pointed out, this, is, uh, this month is dedicated to a celebration of Black history. And after all that transpired this past year and has been transpiring in our country um, uh, for years and years, we have a deeper commitment to lift up Black history uh, to nurture and support Black excellence and to achieve equity for our students and in our city and society. Um, our commitment to racial equity is reflected in the work that our colleges are doing uh, and uh, through the equity plan, strategic plans through campus life, um, as, you, as you've heard. Uh, it's reflected as well in the work that our foundation has been doing to create greater college access and retention through financial supports. Uh, it's reflected through our launch of the Fresh Start Debt Forgiveness Program, which by the way, has helped already 678 overwhelmingly black and Latinx students return to college this fall uh, through this Fresh Start Program. 42 of those students have actually already completed and eliminated their debt and begun to forge uh, a new path in life as a result of the program. We, we look forward to so many more of them completing and uh, going on with their careers. Um, I want to uh, also uh, remind everyone that we have a commitment to uh, anti-racism work. Uh, our racial equity work will be prepared, propelled forward by our new AVC of racial equity, whose hiring is being considered by the board today. Uh, Mr. Bruce King uh, will be joining us from St. Olaf College, a liberal arts college in Minnesota, where he served as vice president for equity and inclusion. He's a native of Chicago. Uh, he brings over 30 years of equity and inclusion experience at public and private higher education and K through 12 institutions. Um, and we really look forward to introducing him to the city colleges of Chicago community. Um, I also want to update you uh, on the leadership structure for the Anti-Racism Committee. Olive Harvey President Kimberly Hollingsworth will now be jo joining um, Secretary uh, Peggy Davis uh, to co-chair the Anti-Racism Committee. We've received 45 recommendations, um, nominations for potential committee members, and we'll be shortly doing the important work of seating a 21 to 25 person committee and putting together uh, our plan of action. Um, you know, we've done a lot over the last few uh, months too to continue the work. Uh, you, you know, we, we, we had our second cohort of Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation Partnership to train racial healers um, in the community. And we'll continue to do more of that work as uh, we go forward. Uh, I also wanna point out that City Colleges is playing a leading role in the vaccination effort in Chicago. Seven of our colleges now serve as sites for vaccine distribution in partnership with Chicago Department of Public Health. And we're so proud to be doing our part in this uh, fight against COVID. Uh, uh, and you know, to see you know, our college leadership uh, and our college community really stepping up in many instances during this pandemic uh, has been very gratifying and wanna mention that to you. As the chair uh, did uh, speak to earlier, uh, we wanna thank former uh, Mayor uh, Emanuel and uh, First Lady, former First Lady Rule uh, for launching a fundraising campaign to support our star scholars who wanna to transfer to four-year universities. They uh, kicked it off with a generous uh, $100,000 gift and have been making some phone calls to 
expand upon uh, that pool of dollars for our students. Um, as uh, you know, our foundation led by uh, President Rhonda Brown, uh, chaired uh, by uh, Gary Rozier, and uh, with the support of our trustee, um, Daryl Williams, as well, is uh, creatively replacing our annual Seven Strong in-person fundraiser that we normally had uh, in November, uh, uh, would have had in November of last year, with a series of seven strong conversations to raise funds and awareness for a new Black Excellence and Equity Fund that we are establishing at City Colleges of Chicago. Um, so, uh, you know, be on the lookout for the seven strong speaker series. I want to thank um, everyone who has been involved in uh, putting this together, as well as that will be involved in the actual um, sessions themselves. Uh, I also want to uh, commend Olive Harvey College for earning uh, 10 year HLC uh, accreditation uh, through the 2030 2031 academic year. Uh, in addition, uh, the college was recommended uh, to present at the virtual 2021 accreditation share fair during the HLC annual conference to basically share their experiences and lessons learned from a successful reaccreditation uh, process. Uh, today, in just a few minutes, the board will consider a new teacher endorsement uh, at Truman College, and we will have a presentation from Truman College to put that into context and showcase the range of their innovation, innovative work in education and their focus on building a pipeline of excellent, diverse educators to teach Chicago's next generations. Um, among uh, the many efforts at Truman is this growing partnership with the University of Chicago's Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering, uh, which the chair referenced below uh, before. Uh, I'm, I'm not, Chair, going to speak uh, so much to it because I really want Truman College to speak to it. Uh, while this is an effort that will be open to City College students across uh, the City College community, uh, we did ask Truman College to take the lead in building out uh, this uh, wonderful partnership that brings so much value and opens up new windows of opportunity for our students, our faculty, and our staff. And by the way, position City College in a way um, that, uh, that, that allows our students to uh, be seen for their full potential and our faculty to be engaged um, in deep and meaningful ways with faculty at uh, the, the University of Chicago and its Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering. And by the way, it's just the beginning of our work with the University of Chicago. We've had a number of conversations where we will be advancing further work in partnership um, with the university as we are doing with many other um, universities across our city. Um, I want to today to recognize that uh, four of our presidents will be considered by the board for reappointment. Um, David Sanders, president, Malcolm X College, Dr. Gregory Thomas, president, Kennedy King College, Dr. David Potash, president of Wilbur Wright College, and Dr. Sean Jackson, president of Truman College. Each of these leaders bring heart, passion, commitment to servant uh, leadership uh, to our college. And I wanna thank them for their efforts, thank them and their teams. Um, you know, as you're aware, we continue to navigate our way through a challenging pandemic and work to prepare our students to lead in the post COVID economic recovery. Um, you know, leadership matters and I am proud uh, to have uh, a strong leadership team uh, at the district, in the colleges, uh, and a very capable faculty and staff uh, that are leading this institution to ensure that our students are well served and that we continuously improve um, in areas where we can always do better. And so uh, with that, Chair Massey, that is uh, the conclusion of my report. Chair 
probably for the best. Huh? Uh, there were no uh, public participation today, so we will move directly to Professor Spruill's faculty council report. That's getting to be the phrase nowadays. You're on mute, right? <laughs> <laughs> Professor Spruill. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. You're not on mute. Chairperson Massey, Board of Trustees, Chancellor Salgado, Provost Potter, officers of the district, faculty, staff, and all others streaming, good afternoon. I hope that everyone has been well since we last convened in December, and I'd like to acknowledge Black History Month, in which we celebrate and remember that in every point of history of this country and of the world, Blacks have existed, contributed, resisted, persisted, and mattered. We recognize and support all of the programming that will be held over this month at our various colleges. I'd like to begin where I did in December, which is concerning our students' mental well being. Last week, FC4 had the opportunity to meet with Donnell Barnett, who has since left his position with the City Colleges concerning the Mental Health Early Action on Campus Act and our progression towards compliance. While we still have a little bit of a lift in, ahead of us, I'm glad to report that we are making satisfactory progression towards compliance. Dr. Barnett's expertise and professionalism will be missed, but I expect that we will continue making progress to meet the 2023 deadline to begin reporting. We have not gotten any concrete information about how we are to offer curriculum to our students, faculty, and staff that is similar to that which we are offering to Chicago Public Police Department as part of the consent decree, but it has been on the mind of our chancellor and provost and again, we are making progress in that area as well. Provost Potter discussed it possibly being offered as a continuing education course and maybe even as credit bearing work. FC4 also suggested related workshops to those, for those who cannot commit to a course in either fashion. We look forward to partnering in this area in the near future. This next item will be brought before the board as policy change and FC4 fully supports changing the policy to extend the free retake of courses that students took in the spring of 2020 through the end of spring 2023. Considering the tech divide that many of our students experience and the thoughtful, safe, and incremental nature that we expect will guide how we begin offering more classes face-to-face -face moving forward, this policy change will be beneficial to so many of our students. We are also pleased to report that the work of the Learning Agenda, a committee overseeing the many research projects of the district with the goal of maintaining shared governance and research projects, prioritizing them, and socializing the findings to our college communities in ways that support the various stakeholders to use data to empower them in making meaningful data-driven decisions for the betterment of our institutions. This work is very important and we are excited about the collaborative nature of this group. We haven't had the opportunity to meet with SGA leadership yet this semester. However, Trustee Thomas, FC4 has reserved time to listen to SGA at the beginning of each of our monthly meetings if you all choose to come, and we are still available to join you all at your meetings at your request. Finally, over the winter break, there have been drastic and quite frankly devastating attacks on developmental education across the state. This should not come as a surprise to any of you. Even before I became the FC4 president, my colleagues and I for the last six years have come before the board to inform you of both the national and local developments concerning developmental education. And on many occasions, we came to solicit support from the board and our district administration to fight legislation that the preponderance of research suggests would be detrimental to the students whom we serve. In the past, bills written by Partnership for College Completion and Women Employed have sought to replace what they are blanketly calling traditional models of developmental education with co-requisite models that have been proven to disadvantage black, brown, and poor students. They have also attempted to mandate the use of single measure placement, though again, the research says that using multiple measures in conjunction yields the best, most accurate placements. In conjunction with faculty and administrators across the state, we've been able to stave off such legislation. However, during the most recent lame duck session, identical language was placed in both a House and Senate bill that look to dramatically alter developmental coursework and how we place students. While it did not seek to require the use of COREX, it did attempt to mandate the use of single measures, including high school GPA. 
The City College's Developmental Education Committee, commissioned by our chancellor and led by Provost Potter, determined that GPA was not a reliable measure to be used for placement. First, it does not measure reading, writing, or math skills. Rather, it more closely reflects a student's grit, and we do not place students in appropriate coursework based on grit. We place based on skill level. Second, there's evidence that within Chicago public schools, the meaning of grades varies widely across the district. For example, a GPA of 3.0 to 3.24 at one high school predicts a college success rate of 21%, whereas the same GPA at another high school predicts an 81% rate of college success. This would suggest that the use of GPA to place students would inevitably result in underprepared students being placed into coursework that they could not reasonably be expected to successfully pass. And we have an obligation, according to HLC, to place students in coursework that they could reasonably be expected to pass. Subsection C of section 100-15 of the House Bill 2170, which passed during this past lame duck session says, quote, if a student's if a student qualifies for placement in an introductory college level English language or mathematics course using a single measure under subsection A or B, no additional measures need to be considered for placement of the student into the introductory college level English language math course, end quote. Faculty have interpreted this as meaning that because the language here says need not be, not shall not be, that the bill allows for the use of measures under the subsections A and B, which would be GPA, standardized tests, and transitional English courses offered in the high schools in conjunction with other measures to determine placement that is correct. Leadership at ICCB has said that the intention of the bill was that a single measure would suffice, but they have also acknowledged that the language of the bill does not mandate that. Because of this flexibility in language, the data that we have that says that this measure in its local context is not reliable and our provost statement to the developmental aid committee that the measure that we would not seek to use that measure at that time, there's nothing requiring us to use the measure in singularity to place student, students. If the provost seeks to do so in the face of this evidence and contrary to this belief that is a bare, his belief that is a barely, barely a year old, we would have to ask the question, what is the push to do something that we reasonably believe would be damaging to our students. As I've stated before, we have addressed this issue with our district leadership and the board on numerous occasions. And at the October 2019 board meeting, I specifically asked Trustee Swanson to discuss the matter with the English discipline. In an email on Friday, November 19th, excuse me, November 8th of 2019, I received from Trustee Swanson, who is also the chairperson of the Board of Partnership for College Completion, the architect for the language in House Bill 2170, she thanked me for my remarks at the October board meeting and agreed to meet about developmental education with a group of faculty in early 2020. She wrote, quote, I'm relatively new to my day job and more pertinent, pertinently to my volunteer service on the board of Partnership for College Completion, which I joined late this summer. I'd like to have a little more time in place to better understand their perspective, as well as their existing and planned efforts before sitting down with you for a substantive conversation. I'm also planning to sit down with CCC leadership to get more fully briefed on the new committee established with the faculty and provost and to learn more about how that work is intended to advance, end quote. To date, we have not met. I'm unsure if she has met with Provost Potter and Chancellor Salgado about developmental education. However, Provost Potter reported last week that he and the chancellor had no conversations with Trustee Swanson about House Bill 2170. Many faculty find it extremely troubling that the vice chair of our board is also the chairperson of a board of an organization whose primary work has been to promote legislation that would not be in the best interest of our students. Her response to my remarks at the board meeting confirmed that she was aware of the issue then, and I imagine, though she may not be involved in the day-to-day -day workings of PCC, surely she had to be aware of this hallmark work that they have been undertaking, and that the rest of our board was aware of the research position that the faculty have held. We would like to know, how does our board reconcile the duality of vice chair Swanson's role with both of our organizations that have competing interests. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Thank you very much, Professor Spiro. Uh, we will now move to the district update. Today, we will be hearing from Professor Jackson's team on the various education initiatives at Truman College. The slides from today's presentation will also be posted uh, where would they be posted? 
Sorry. We'll be posted on our website, sir. Yes, they will be posted after the meeting. Pres President Jackson, uh, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair Massey. Uh, good afternoon, trustees, Chancellor Salgado, Provost, Provost Potter, and everyone with us today. My name is Dr. Sean Jackson, and I am the proud president of Harry S. Truman College. I'm honored today to be presenting with my colleagues, Vice President Kate Connor and Dean of Education and Teacher Programs, Holly Weir J, about how Truman serves as City Colleges of Chicago's hub of education. Next slide, please. Today, we will provide a brief overview of who we are, provide an update on some of our existing initiatives, provide information on some of our new initiatives, and we'll answer any questions you may have. Next slide. We will start with who we are. Next slide. Truman has positioned itself to be the education hub for educators across Chicago. We not only service students who have chosen to become educators, but we have also created opportunities for those who are currently in the field. To serve as the education hub, we provide training and services to educators from pre-K through 16. We train and recruit our informal educators who engage our students in the out of school time space. And we actively engage the new teaching workforce with the commitment to build teachers from the community for their community. Our campus also serves as a space to develop and incubate innovative practices, particularly around teaching and learning. Next slide. In order to best service our educators, we strategically built our administrative team to possess experiences that provide us the agility to operate in a variety of educational spaces. Our core leadership team possesses ISBE approved teaching and administrative licenses, as well as higher ed teaching and leadership experience. Understanding how our classrooms operate, how instruction is evaluated, and how schools and campuses are managed allows us to ensure our programming is specific to the needs of today's present and future educators. Next slide. We want to take this moment to update you on some of our existing initiatives. Next slide. Chicago Early Learning Workforce Scholarship is able to provide additional educational opportunities to those serving our youngest learners. 559 CCC students have been awarded the scholarship since fall 2018. These educators are deepening their toolkit to impact the next generation of learners and addressing the workforce shortage. Next slide, please. Through this scholarship, we're able to impact Black and Latinx communities and maintain the diversity in the field. Next slide, please. Educator endorsements and credentials. As a former CPS teacher and administrator in Chicago Public Schools, I understand the importance of hiring highly qualified teachers. Over 80% of CPS teachers currently hold a master's degree. These teachers are looking for access to affordable options to increase their educational toolkit. CPS has let us know their greatest areas of need. Truman is the only city college, is the only community college in Illinois offering the ESL bilingual endorsement. Next slide, please. This slide illustrates some of the endorsements we have in the pipeline for 2021. Next slide, please. Truman was honored by the opportunity to support the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering partnership with City Colleges. This education innovation aligned with pillars that we know to be essential to any innovative education effort, leadership, collaboration, and student experience. In regards to collaboration, Truman and University of Chicago had regular interactions. We partnered, highlighting our needs and discussed our hopes for students in this project. They were always available to us and honored our knowledge and experience serving our students. Additionally, leadership was at the cornerstone of making this effort come to fruition. Dr. Al Mazawi, the chair of our physical science and engineering department, took ownership over the project and worked to assure that every single student eligible for this application knew about the effort. He worked to partner in an information session and he was available to any student that needed help navigating their application process. Finally, and most importantly, student experience was at the center of our conversations. We never focused on a one-off interaction, but rather we built an experience that aligns with the student's academic journey from assuring hands-on experiences to considering transfer and graduate school and discuss the job outlooks for students entering this field. This project highlights that wonderful intersection of real life experience discipline training, mentorship, and future opportunities. Next slide, please. 
We're very proud of our cosmetology program and excited to share changes in the department. Another cornerstone of education innovation is reflection and growth. This department has emulated these practices in their work in and out of the classroom. When Truman was first named a Center of Excellence in Education, the department took the opportunity to grow their program and build a cosm cosmetology teacher licensing certificate, which allows currently licensed cosmetologists to become state approved educators in their field. Reflection and growth also requires openness to data and evaluation. Our cosmetology program embraced the messiness that that work begets. While engaging in program review and assessment cycles, the program heard from male students about challenges they experienced and their perceived gap in the curriculum that missed where they saw themselves serving in the field. So with the support of Dr. Jackson, the faculty worked with an external partner to develop a barbering certificate to meet students and the field's needs, which we plan to launch by fall 2021. Next slide. In December 2018, we announced the Men of Color in Education Initiative. This initiative was created to address the shortage of men of color in the field of education. Cohort one ended this fall. And out of this cohort, we had two mentors who were promoted to executive leadership positions. One of our mentees was hired by Chicago Public Schools as a special education classroom assistant. And another one of our mentees completed their first year of college and switched his major to education. Next slide. During the program's implementation, we were able to achieve some key milestones that will significantly contribute to the program moving forward. We received permission from CPS to run a dual credit, dual enrollment track in education for high school students. We received a commitment from the Chicago Early Learning Scholarship to provide tuition for men of color who choose to enter the early childhood field. And we also had a commitment from Chicago Public Schools to support the hiring of successful completers of the program. The 2021 cohort consists of five mentors and five mentees. We made this a smaller cohort, recognizing that a lot of the mentor-mentee interactions will need to be virtual. MCE will serve as a convener of male educators and support education initiatives across Chicago. Next slide, please. In our partnership with One Summer Chicago and Northwestern University, Truman College leads the STEAM ambassador program on behalf of City Colleges of Chicago. The STEAM ambassador program is designed to train CCC and partner university students to provide STEAM opportunities for Chicago youth, particularly in areas where opportunity gaps exist. In the summer of 2020, City Colleges of Chicago partnered with Chicago Park Districts to provide virtual programming to 14 park locations. The STEAM ambassador program serves as an onboarding ramp for potential teaching candidates in Truman Center of Excellence model. Next slide, please. Now we would like to take this opportunity to share with you some of our new initiatives. Next slide, please. Caring Campus is a supportive effort looking to amplify faculty voices and create spaces for collaboration across disciplines. This initiative also aligns with our strength-based approach to creating a culture shift at Truman. It afforded us the opportunity to collect data from faculty about their teaching practices, and then a space for faculty to work with an external partner to develop behavioral commitments they plan to implement or grow in their classroom. We are now creating professional learning communities for other faculty to discuss these commitments, learn from each other, and explore ways to create caring and supportive learning relationships between faculty and students. Next slide, please. Building on Dean Ware Jay's point regarding the early childhood workforce crisis, policy and advocacy leaders across the city and state have been coming together to explore ways to increase access and supports to those needing to upskill to a minimum of a bachelor's degree in the field. One avenue to this level of academic attainment that exists in many states, but not in Illinois, is the Community College Baccalaureate. The early childhood field has been exploring this as a pro an approach to offer robust supports to the field that need access to four-year degrees, complementing, not, completing, not competing with transfer partnerships. Truman has been engaged in this conversation around the viability of such an offer, and we are excited by what this could offer the early childhood field that needs to upskill quickly. Next slide, please. Teach Chicago. As the education hub for City Colleges of Chicago, we continue to deepen our partnership with CPS. The CPS CCC ISU Teacher Pipeline Partnership is part of the Chicago Public Schools Teach Chicago Tomorrow initiative designed to recruit teachers. 100 CPS graduates will follow a two plus two pathway that will allow them to begin at CCC, then transfer and earn an ISU bachelor's degree in education, all without leaving Chicago. Next slide, please. In the summer of 2021, Truman will be launching the LEAD Center. 
In a recent survey for both our adult ed and credit students, over 50% of our respondents stated they had an interest in leadership development. The LEAD Center is designed to provide resources and support to build and foster students' leadership capabilities in and out of our classrooms. LEAD is where we will house our mentor training programs, both for our internal student body as well as our external partners. Next slide, please. Lastly, through a donation from Apple, Truman College has created the Innovation One Technology Training and Resource Center. Innovation One is designed to provide access to technology training and resources for students, educators, and community members. In our effort to address the digital divide, Innovation One provides training for educators on the latest technology tools and resources. It also provides access to equipment via our learning library that ensures students across Chicago are extended these learning opportunities in their classrooms. And finally, a community learning space that provides participants access to the latest technology free of charge. Our inaugural training cohorts have begun remotely this spring and are listed on this slide. An official launch of the space is scheduled this semester and we hope to have the opportunity to invite you to our event. Next slide, please. On behalf of our Truman community, we would like to thank you for the opportunity to share our work. We can now open the floor for any questions or comments you may have. Thank you. Any questions? Well, I must say, I think the range of programs from molecular engineering to cosmetology is really striking. Uh, do, does Illinois have for-profit cosmetology institutes and do they think we compete with them? I know that's an issue in Iowa somewhere I read. Is that an issue here? Yeah, I'll chime in uh, first. Uh, yes, there are for-profit uh, cosmetology programs and our cost is, makes it much more accessible for our students here in Chicago, comparative to. Is that no. become a big political issue? No, okay, good. No, I was gonna say, uh, President um, Jackson, I think the, I also like the, the broadness and, and uh, perspective that you've offered around the educational opportunities. Are there um, programs that you've now looked back on and say, well, maybe we should do it a little bit differently going forward or is there another program you wanna bring forward that we should consider? Uh, wow. Thank you, Chelsea Taylor, for, for, for <laughs> giving me that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what's interesting is, and, and Chancellor Salgado is extremely aware of this, the, the Men of Color in Education Initiative was very dear to my heart being a, a former educator and my parents being educators. Um, when we initially created the initiative, uh, it was really designed with both the mentee and mentor in mind because the mentors we chose were actively participants in the education process, many of them educational leaders themselves. I was not prepared for all of their promotions, even though I was extremely happy. Um, we also ran into a pandemic and, and, and some other things. Uh, and so part of the learning that came from that was to try to scale it down some. And we originally started with three large cohorts. We had, you know, up, up to 45 mentees. There were three mentees per mentor. Uh, in order to create a, a more robust, deeper relationship, we decided to scale that down some, in particular with everything uh, that is going on with the pandemic. Uh, as far as expansion, and, and I'll speak from my perspective, I can turn it over to my, my colleagues uh, if they would like to chime in. That out of school time space, which can be extremely controversial, um, is something that we are really digging into. And we, and we talked about that briefly in this presentation. Our students spend a lot of time outside of the classroom. Mm -hmm. And it has always been a challenge trying to connect that learning to what is happening, to be able to inform how they are learning in the classroom. There's mm -hmm. also an interesting disparity between um, how students are engaged outside of the classroom with some of the stimuli and technology and some of the, I'm not going to call them antiquated, but some of the systems that are set up uh, mm -hmm. in our classroom structures uh, mm -hmm. that a lot of times is no fault of the educator themselves. It's just the, the, the systems. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're really trying to find a way to bridge that gap and create an education hub 
that kind of wraps our arms around all of those educators. We do this really well in the early childhood space where we will have traditional maybe building uh, teachers that would teach in a, a public school um, participating in professional development side by side with an individual that's working in a childcare center, right? And not seeing these as competing entities, but more so opportunities to have shared learning opportunities to really make that connection for students. And so we're trying to replicate that in the out of school time and uh, in school time space. Um, a lot of people have been working on that. This is not my first time playing in this space. Uh, but definitely something, particularly seeing that we are um, in a position of higher education where we don't necessarily represent the classroom workforce per se as a mm -hmm. district, uh, gives us an opportunity to, to have some flexibility in that space. Okay, good, thank you. Trustee Tim, I, I might just uh, add, you'll, you'll keep hearing more about Teach uh, Chicago tomorrow as well. And um, I think there certainly are some growth opportunities there. And President Jackson has done an incredible job, he and the team, in structuring that. You know, I will say that when we're working with universities um, to structure partnerships, uh, it, you know, by the time we get to the uh, board meeting and the agreement, you know, it, uh, it's all celebrated and we're all in unison. But boy, putting those things together is really hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I could see Vice President kind of laughing because um, we're trying to streamline things for our students. Yep. We don't want them to repeat courses when they go to the four-year university. And so it's a lot of negotiation that has mm -hmm. to happen. Um, and by the way, a lot of our faculty and our uh academic leadership demonstrating to the four-year university that everything we do is absolutely on par and we'll have those students ready for that experience at the four-year. And so we've really come a long way. Every time you see one of these partnerships uh, in front of you, just know that behind it was that level of deep work by the president and vice president and deans and um, faculty members on our campuses. Hmm. Okay. Thank well, you. Enough, oh, well, it's a great presentation. Congratulations to all of you. So we have two committee reports today. Uh, first, I'll ask Vice Chair Swanson to give her report on the Committee on Academic Affairs and Student Services. Then Trustee Williams will report on the City College's um, foundation. I just want to. Great. Thank you, Chair Massey. Um, so earlier this afternoon, we held the first meeting of the Committee on Academic Affairs and Student Services of the Year. Um, it was a very productive meeting and informative. We heard from President Sanders and the team from Malcolm X College about the Community Health Worker Program. Over the last several years, the program has taken off and really continues to grow. Uh, recently, the uh, the Chicago Health, the Health Workers Program has received 2.1 million in grant funding to provide further services and apprenticeship opportunities for community health workers to provide services to children and families impacted by opioids, as well as other substance use disorders. Um, it was really an incredible presentation and I know the trustees appreciated um, uh, President Sanders and the team for, for giving us that update. The committee also reviewed and discussed the resolutions, personnel report, resource development report, agreements, purchases, and legal invoices contained in the February regular board meeting packet that's being brought before the board today in this meeting. Um, and with that, that concludes my report. I'll just go ahead and jump in. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, I'm pleased to report on the January City Colleges of Chicago Foundation Board of Directors meeting and overall progress. Uh, over the last year, CCCF has, been, has seen increased giving from the local foundation community and individual donors. On behalf of uh, Chair Gary Rozier and the rest of the um, board, we wanna thank 
and acknowledge the continued generous contributions and immediate support for CCC students during these challenging times. Members of the CCC Foundation Board met with its investment consultant PFM to discuss the investment portfolio. While the market was volatile in, in 2020 due to the pandemic and other factors, the investment portfolio produced a return of a little under 15% for the year, outpacing its benchmark. The board also will, uh, will also be doing a review with PFM to incorporate more diverse managers in the portfolio. Chancellor Salgado mentioned the seven strong fundraising speaker series with proceeds from the event to fund uh, the Black Equity and Excellence Fund. I would add that the speaker series is aligned with goals within the CCC's strategic plan, Our Path Forward, which calls for the narrowing of racial equity gaps within CCC by a third uh, by 2025, with particular emphasis on increasing outcomes among Black students. Please reach out to Vice Chancellor Rhonda Brown if you would like to uh, invite guests to attend. Again, on behalf of Chair Rozier, I would like to uh, thank Chair Massey and Vice Chair Swanson for their participation and support for the speaker series. In your packets, you should see the list of discussions, dates, and speakers in the current list of sponsors. I also wanna call attention to the pilot initiative at the end of the calendar year to support CCC student scholarships. An end of year fund, uh, scholarship campaign using a crowdsourcing fundraising platform at each of the seven colleges raised about $100,000. This amount was unprecedented. These funds will be dispersed by each college. And while the opportunity to give was disseminated widely, 98% of the gifts to the fund came from CCC faculty and employees. The City Colleges of Chicago Foundation Board is grateful to each and every donor who in these difficult times made it a priority to support college specific student scholarships. Thank you. Finally, Chair Rozier asked that I also publicly thank the Salgado family for their personal contribution to this campaign, which was matched five to one by a local foundation which helped push the campaign over the $100,000 mark. Thank you, Chancellor Salgado. This concludes my report. Thank you very much, Trustee Williams, and to the Salgado family. Thank you. Uh, we will now, and thank you, Vice Chair Swanson. We will now proceed to consider the items on the February 4th, 2021 consent agenda. The substantive details have been posted on the board website consistent with our practice. This month, all board items, uh, items for board action are on the consent agenda with the exception of resolutions 1.06 through 1.09 and resolutions 1.12 and 1.13. We will take action on those resolutions after the closed session. I would like to note for the record that the items on the consent agenda were discussed in detail in the committee meeting immediately preceding this board meeting as noted by our Vice Chair Swanson during her committee report. So does any trustee have questions or comments on any of the items listed uh, just described or would any trustee like to request a separate action on any of the items other than the ones I've already identified? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes, resolutions, minus 1.06 through 1.09 and 1.12 and 1.13. The personnel report, resource development report, agreements, purchases, and the legal invoices contained in the consent agenda and identified as part of the printed agenda on a single roll call vote. I may have a motion, please. So moved. So moved. And second. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, Assistant Secretary, would you call the roll? Mr. Swanson. Approved. Secretary Davis? Approved. Trustee Kent? Approved. Trustee Lopez? Approved. Trustee Talman? Approved. Trustee Williams? Approved. Student Trustee Thomas? Approved. 
Chair Massey. Approved, thank you. So let the record show that the minutes, resolutions, personnel report, research development report, agreements, purchases, and legal invoices included on the February 4th, 2021 consent agenda have all been approved. So now in accordance with the Illinois Open Meetings Act, the board may hold a closed session for the discussion of matters related to a number of specified topics. Today's closed session will be for the discussion of matters related to 2C1, the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body. 2C2, collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives or pardon me, deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. Uh, and 2C21, discussion of meetings lawfully closed under this act, whether for purposes of approval by the body of the minutes or semi-annual review of the minutes as mandated by section 2.06. So may I have a motion to go into closed session with a roll call vote in motion, please. So moved. Second. And moved and second, Assistant Secretary. Please call the roll. Vice Chair Swanson. Approved. Secretary Davis. Approved. Trustee Kent. Approved. Trustee Lopez. Approved. Trustee Talman. Approved. Trustee Williams. Approved. Student Trustee Thomas. Approved. Chair Massey. So let the record show that the motion has been, let the record show that the motion has been approved. For those of you who are viewing the live feed, it will remain active, although you will see a notice that the board is in closed session. And we will return to take action on remaining resolutions and to formally adjourn the meeting after that closed session. For those who decide to depart before we return today, thank you for joining us. You can look to our website, www.ccc.edu for information on our next meeting. So trustees, please uh, let's close out here and tune in to the closed session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Um, Oscar, would you um, be able to move Trustee Talman into the meeting, please? Um, oh, I thought I was in the meeting. I didn't know you could do that. And could you also move Chair Massey over as well, please? Thank you. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, Chair Massey, you do have all of the trustees on. So the February 4th, 2021 regular board meeting is now reconvened. There was no action taken during closed session. We will now proceed to take action on the remaining board reports. Chief Advisor Phillips, please review resolution 1.06 through 1.09, and resolutions 1.12 and 1.13. Um, Chair Massey, I believe Chief Phillips might be having some issues getting on, but I will go ahead and review the resolutions for her. Okay. Um, resolutions 1.06 amends Dr. Sean Jackson's current contract to terminate on June 30th, 2021, and reappoint Dr. Jackson to continue to serve as president of Truman College effective July 1st, 2021. Resolution 1.07 reappoints Dr. David Potash to continue to serve as the president of Wright College effective July 1st, 2021. Resolution 1.08 reappoints David Sanders to continue to serve as the president of Malcolm X College effective July 1st, 2021. Resolution 1.09 reappoints Dr. Gregory Thomas to continue to serve as the president of Kennedy King College effective July 1st, 2021. Resolution 1.12 allows for the disposition of closed session minutes that have been reviewed and approved by the board in accordance with the Illinois Open Meetings Act. It further notes for the record that there are minutes that have been reviewed and not yet eligible for release. And finally, resolution 1.13 adopts a policy for presidential leadership development. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments on the items just described? Okay, I'm hearing now I have a motion to approve resolutions 1.06 through 1.09 and 1.12 and 1.13. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, we need a roll call vote for this, Assistant Secretary. Vice Chair Swanson? Approved. Secretary Davis? Approved. Trustee Kent? Approved. Trustee Lopez? Approved. Trustee Talman? Approved. Trustee Williams? Approved. Student Trustee Thomas? Approved. Chair Massey? Approved. So thank you and let the records show the resolutions 1.06 through 1.09, 1.12, and 1.13 have all been approved. We will provide updates on our website, www.ccc.edu as they relate to our next meeting or any change to our existing plans. Uh, now, there being no further business to come before the board, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, please. So move, move to adjourn. Seven. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Take care, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.